never seen anybody walk on water, but there are okay, so many. There are so many stories of people who have been changed by, uh, you know, by God. They've seen the light of God, and so okay. you sort of turn a blind eye Listen. to science, right? Or We're gonna need science because okay. it's for our benefit. We're gonna we're gonna let someone else ask a few a few questions. Sounds but like I'm kind of scared of the answer. Beta. Self-proclaimed theocratic fascist Matt Walsh got his world rocked during a speaking event for the Young America's Foundation at the University of Iowa, and. Usually these far-right propagandists feel very comfortable debating college students with no media training or memorized talking points because they feel like they can score some easy dubs against them. However, from time to time, one or two students will come along and throw these conservative NPCs off by asking a question not accounted for in their predetermined dialogue tree. So we're going to watch the full exchange here in a moment. But first, let me just point out that the entire stream on the Young America's Foundation YouTube channel is 58 minutes and 36 seconds and the moment where this chad debates the virgin matt walsh starts at around the 41 minute mark but what's weird is that there's an abrupt cut in the stream and we don't actually get to see the first portion of their interaction now the question is did they do it to shield matt walsh I'm not sure. Uh, there was also a lot of technical difficulty, so it's difficult to hear the student here in this exchange. Um, and I kind of scanned ahead and there was no technical difficulties afterwards, none beforehand. So it is a little bit bizarre. Now my, my tinfoil hat, haven't put it on yet, but it just seems very uh, conspicuous, right? It seems like maybe it's plausible that they were trying to protect Matt Walsh. However, with that being said, we're going to see how this was still very bad for Matt Walsh. What we saw does not make him look good at all. So without further ado, let's watch it, and then I'll give you some additional context when we come back. We got your video. And I'll, I'll answer this, and then we'll be... Don't we, don't we do this all the time? You, 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 what you're asking me is, do we, do we put, um, as you say, the benefit, the well-being of human beings above... The truth, and what I'm telling you is that that is the ultimate false dichotomy. We do not have to choose between those two. In fact, there is the, the ultimate well-being for a human being is to live in the truth with a deep recognition of truth, and that—that's how you. I mean, we, this isn't a new thing. I mean, we we do this already with uh, religion, for example. Um, right. We've never seen anybody walk on water. Never seen anybody walk on water, but there are okay, so many. There are so many stories of people who have been changed by, uh, you know, by God. They've seen the light of God, and so okay. you sort of turn a blind eye Listen. to science, right? Or We're gonna need science because okay. it's for our benefit. We're gonna we're gonna let someone else ask a few a few questions. Sounds but like I'm kind of scared of the answer. Before you walk away, though, hey, hey, wait a minute, 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 wait, wait. Because any, anyone who comes up and if you want to argue with me about the trans stuff, it's, it's great. You know, I'm, I'm glad we can have the conversation. But we're talking about truth. We're talking about uh, uh, biological sex. So I always have to ask the question at the end. I mean, everyone knows what the question is going to be. But so what, what, what is a woman? What, can you define the term? I think the answer to what is a woman is um, a person who aligns with feminine traits that we traditionally associate with females, or that people that align with the feminine side of the spectrum. So that's my answer. Um, and I think that answer should, uh, the definition of everything changes over time. And okay. as All we right. continue to learn more about what humans can really be um i think that can continue to uh grow and i hope i hope you understand that okay but but uh, i just want to make clear that you i, I can't hear I can't, as soon I can't as i brought up a point that you didn't want to respond to so i, I couldn't hear what you, you say say your last comment I'll, i was just saying i want to point out that you asked me to leave as soon as i brought up something you didn't want to respond to what, so what did I, I want to respond to? Freely leave. I, I mentioned religion being um, a source of where we deny or look past science uh, for
for the greater sense of humanity. Uh, and I, you asked me I to I did leave. respond to that. Okay. I, I responded respond to that respond quite, to quite directly. So. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. All right. Thank you for your question. Next question. So, I still can't hear you. I can't, I, I can't hear you. You got to speak up. All right. Thank you for your question. God damn, Matt Walsh got absolutely bodied. And this just goes to show you that these fascist evangelicals, they're all paper tigers. They may project confidence while making these genocidal arguments, but no matter how much they try to sound confident or apply some sort of a logical or intellectual veneer to their bigotry, at the end of the day, that doesn't change the fact that their arguments are purely emotional. They're based on an irrational phobia of queer people, and that is something that we all can use to our advantage. Now, the reason why Matt Walsh refused to respond to that very simple question is because he didn't have an answer. That student right there dismantled the entire worldview of Matt Walsh, and the reason why that's so powerful is because Matt Walsh saw his own standards be used against him to dismantle his own argument. So he uses the pretense of science and biology to delegitimize transgender people. But if his adherence to science is so rigid, then how do you explain your belief that Jesus Christ walked on water and then rose from the dead and flew up into heaven? It doesn't make sense, right? You can't say that the science is clear, make it seem as if you believe in science, but then adhere to a book, like live your whole life based on a book where you think talking animals are literally a thing. I, I mean, it's, it's clown shit, right? So you don't, you don't get to make a scientific case against trans people given that you subscribe to a book where they tell you that talking animals are real, right? So it just goes to show you that these people are not rational. These people are purely emotional theocrats that want to see their evangelical worldview imposed on all of us. And that is what that college student beautifully and eloquently demonstrated there. Now, that individual is seemingly a fan of Vosh because he was on Vosh's subreddit and he did a little bit of an AMA after he got back and he provided proof that it was him that was there. Uh, now, I want to share a couple of things that he said because he gives us some additional context that we were missing from that video. So first and foremost, with regard to the suspicious technical issues that they were experiencing, he doesn't actually believe that it was intentional. So in response to a question asking about whether or not Matt Walsh was pretending to not hear him in order to deflect, he responded by saying, honestly, I was having trouble hearing him at times too because of the crowd. So I think it was just the genuine miscommunication. Now he also addresses the missing footage and tells us what he said, writing, I'm not sure what happened with the missing footage. To sum it up, I opened the debate by pointing out how high trans suicide rates are and how gender affirming care greatly reduces those rates. Walsh tried to make that data look false. It's a huge common consensus that has been studied incredibly well. We argued about that for a bit. Then, based off the fact that gender affirming care is so successful, I asked him something along the lines of, shouldn't we value what's best for humanity over our intuition on what's true? He, of course, responded no, and then I made my point about how we already do this with religion. So now we know what he said. We don't know why they cut out that portion, though, or if it was just an honest mistake. Now, last but not least, he offered some advice to anyone else that might want to confront Matt Walsh or any of these ghouls if they come to their college. He says, just be prepared to be heckled and for the crowd to try to make you feel weak. When he inevitably asks you what is a woman, answer in a way that either makes the question look stupid or Walsh's definition look indefensible they'll never listen to an actual definition if you try to give one so yeah and i think that that's good advice when they project confidence and authority and they have an audience to back them up it's really easy to feel intimidated but at the end of the day keep in mind that these bigots don't actually have logic and evidence on their side they are petulant authoritarians who are trying to force christian theocracy on all of us for example, Matt Walsh called for Lizzo to be thrown in jail because she brought drag queens on stage in Tennessee in protest of their anti-drag queen law. So, I mean, this is not a serious person. This is not a person who has any appeal outside of his bubble. So keep that in mind if you plan to debate one of these dipshits if they come to your college. But either way, this proves that you can have 
confidence. You can have everyone on your side cheering you on. But at the end of the day, their arguments are built on a house of cards that can collapse at the most minimal amount of scrutiny. When you acting like a beta, beta, beta.